Hello everybody! Watch this video to find out how to recover data from RAID 1 built on Netgear RAID NAS Duo R&D 2000 network storage device, how to recover accidentally removed files from the trash bin, and how to retrieve information from a non-operable NAS. Netgear RAID NAS devices are quite fast and safe storage solutions. The manufacturer declares multiple levels of protection against data loss. To get the most out of this storage system, you should understand the available concepts of disk configuration. This NAS uses the X-Ray data storage system by default, but it can also use the conventional storage system, also known as flex rate. Each storage type provides certain degree of reliability, but none can give you a 100% guarantee against possible data loss. In today's video, I'll show you how to change the data storage type on this NAS, how to recover accidentally deleted data, and how to retrieve information from the damaged RAID. As I was saying, this NAS uses X RAID by default. In order to change to Flex RAID, you should factory reset it, and then choose Flex RAID. Also, you can change the RAID type in the settings of the radar utility. Remember that a factory reset clears all data and settings from your RAID NAS system. For this operation, there is a dedicated reset button on the NAS case. To factory reset the device, press it several times when it boots. Otherwise, go to System, Update, Factory Default, and click on Perform Factory Default. Click Factory and OK to confirm a choice. Open the radar utility, choose your NAS from the list, and click Setup. After that, check the box next to Flexible Volume and click Create Volume. It starts the process of building the RAID, and when it's complete, the status installing will change to creating volume, and soon after that to booting. Alright, the operation was successful, and you have a new volume. Now let's configure FTP access to the storage. To enable FTP server, go to Services, Standard File Protocols, check the box next to FTP. and click Apply. After all that, you can create a shared folder and set access permissions. To do it, open Shares, Add Shares, give a name for the shared directory, and click Apply. The next step is to configure security options for this folder. Open Share Listing and click this button next to the new folder to edit FTP access settings. Set access permissions and click Apply. For protection against accidental removal, this NAS lets you enable the Recycle Bin feature. The Recycle Bin in Netgear Ready NAS is a function of CIFS, which stands for Common Internet File System Protocol. When it's enabled, users can restore deleted files from the Recycle Bin, and the default time period for that is 10 days. When the Recycle Bin feature is active and your resources can be accessed under the CIFS protocol, deleted files are temporarily kept in the Recycle Bin, and after 10 days they are removed completely. Also, deleted files can be removed if the shared directory is accessed via another protocol. Before recovery, make sure that this setting is enabled for your shared folder. Open Shares, Share Listing, and click on the CIFS tab. Scroll down to see if the Recycle Bin option is active. If it is, you will see a folder with the name Recycle Bin in the root directory of the shared resource that contains the deleted files. View and select the files you want to recover, and then right-click on them for recovery. If the Recycle Bin is disabled, use a data recovery tool. In case you fail to retrieve files from the Recycle Bin and you don't have a backup, or the storage system is broken so the RAID has crashed and you can't access the data, important information can still be restored with the specialized data recovery tool. 
Download and install such program called Hetman RAID Recovery. It supports all popular file systems and RAID types, and it will automatically rebuild the damaged RAID with the available hard disks, so that you'll be able to retrieve important data. To start the recovery process, take the drives out of the storage device and connect them directly to the motherboard of a Windows computer. Bear in mind that before starting data recovery operations, you should prepare some free disk space with a capacity equal to the amount of data you are planning to recover from your disk array. Also, if one of the hard disks breaks down, you can lose a part of your data, depending on the RAID level, and this data is impossible to recover. If you're using RAID 0 and one hard disk is down, some information will be lost permanently. The matter is that this array type is meant for higher performance, which is achieved through striping. It means that data is written to either disk in parts, which provides users with high input or output performance at a low cost. At the same time, though, it gives you no redundancy at all. So if that's your case, be ready to face the fact that you won't be able to recover all your stuff. When the hard disks are connected and the program starts, it will automatically scan the disks and rebuild the damaged RAID. The detailed information on your RAID system is displayed below. To search for deleted files, right-click on the volume and choose Open. After that, choose the scan type fast scan or full analysis. If the NAS is down, but the program manages to rebuild the RAID correctly, a fast scan is enough. When the scan is over, open the folder where the lost files were stored. This program retains the entire structure and files names, so it will be easy to find the required items and you can use the preview window to see their contents. Select all the items you want to recover and click the Recovery button. Specify where to save the data. Choose the disk and folder. Click Recovery and Finish. You will find the recovered files in the folder you have chosen. If the program can't find the missing files after the fast scan, then go for full analysis. To do it, return to the main menu, right-click on the disk and choose Analyze again. Full analysis. Choose the file system type. You can uncheck the option for content-aware analysis, as it will make the process go faster. And that is all for now. Hopefully this video was useful. Remember to click the like button and subscribe to our channel. Leave in the comments under this video to ask questions. Thank you for watching and good luck!